In the first part of this tutorial, we have learned how to create an audio visualization in Blender like this. If you have not watched that already, you can find the link in this video description. Now, in the second part, we will look into some advanced settings for baking an audio file into your scene, with this little jumping jack. So, let us start with a blank new file. To create our jumping box from this cube, we will reduce its thickness little bit. So change the X dimension to 0.75. Also move it up slightly, by one unit. Next, we will add the eyeballs here. So go to the Add menu, and add one UV sphere. Scale it down by 0.4. We need to then move the sphere appropriately, so that there is a 50-50 overlap with the cube object. Little bit more towards the left, and upward. We can fine-tune these values directly, 0.75 in the X, then minus 0.5 in the Y, and 1.5 in the Z dimension. Now press Shift D to duplicate it, and move it towards the right side. We can rather enter the exact position directly as 0.5. Cool. We will now cut two holes into the cube from these balls. So select the cube and go to the Modifiers tab. Add one, Boolean modifier. Ensure that the difference option is selected. In the target object, select the first sphere and apply this modifier. Then add the Boolean modifier again. Under the difference option, select the second sphere this time and also apply the modifier. Now, if you hide the spheres, you can see the two holes present on our box. Our first step is complete. So select everything and under the object menu, under Apply, please apply all transforms. Now we will import the sound file for the box. Let us first go to the object properties, and insert a keyframe for the Z location value. Then we can open the graph editor from here. We can verify that this tree has the Z location key. Now go to the key menu and select bake sound to F curves. Go to the location where you have kept your audio file, and then bake the sound to F curve. So here is our curve. Let us now go back to the 3D viewport. We need to also add a speaker. So let us add one from the add menu. Then go to the speaker tab. Click on open. We have to open the same audio file which we have used in the graph editor. You can hide the speaker object in the display. If you now play the animation, you can see the box jumping in the tune of the audio input sound. But the balls are not moving, so we have to connect them to the box. And also, the box is jumping too fast, with every up and down of the sound intensity. For a better appearance here, you may like to have the box jump only at higher beat notes, not every second like this. So we need to modify the F-curve that we have created for this box. Let us go back to the graph editor. We can see that the F-curve has a lot of zigzag like this, with many fluctuations, and fine details. In place of this, we want to have a flatter curve, with less number of changes, and we also want to ignore the small changes, in the lower part of the curve, so that the box will jump only at the high peaks of the input audio stream. So, go to the key menu, select the bake sound option again, and select our audio file. Now, in these options, we have to make suitable changes. Let us first increase this attack time to 0.2, so that the frequency of the jump slows down. And we will also turn on this square option, so that we get a square curve, instead of the original curve. Let us then increase this threshold value, maybe to 0.5. Now, any change in the sound level below this amount will not affect our curve at all, so we will get rid of the smaller changes, or the vibrations. Now bake the sound. So we get a square curve like this, with a few jumps, at the peak values, it is completely free from the random small changes, or the vibrations. Let us now go back to the 3D viewport and play our animation. So, you can see that the box is now jumping with some intervals. It is moving only with the high intensity beats of the sound. This solves our second problem. But we also need to bind these spheres so that they jump along with the box. So, go back to the first frame. We would also like to add one spring at the back of each sphere, which will move with the sphere. Let us first hide our box. So, we have already created a spring object beforehand, let us unhide that object now. We would like to move this spring to one of the spheres. It is very easy to create a spring in Blender, just in one minute. However, if you need help on that, 
please check my tutorial link given below in the video description. To place the spring perfectly, we can directly enter the position values in the object properties. Minus 0.6 in the X, minus 0.5 in the Y, and in the Z dimension, 1.5. Now duplicate the spring by pressing Shift D and move it to the other sphere, or we can just enter 0.5 in the Y position here. Now we got the springs. We have to also bind them to our spheres. While say this spring is selected, press the Shift key and select the sphere. Then press Ctrl P and select object. Then select the other spring and select this sphere, press Ctrl P and select object here. Now select all of them and just like before, let us apply all the transformations. So everything is ready, let us now bring back our box. Then, select both the spheres, and while the Shift key is pressed, also select the box. Then press Ctrl P. And select Object. Now the box is parented to the spheres, and the spheres are in turn parented to their respective springs. Let us also add some materials for them. So, turn on the rendered view mode, and we can also enable the HDRI environment lighting. Then for the box object, please go to the Materials tab. For this default material, let us pick up some nice color, maybe light yellow. And for the spheres, create a new material. And change the color to say, red. Then for the second sphere, we need to just select the same red material. If you want, you can also apply the smooth shading option for the sphere. And the same for the second sphere as well. Fine. If you now run the animation, you can see that they are all jumping together as one single unit. But we want the eyeballs to also pop out simultaneously in this direction, which is its X dimension, and the spring should move too. So we will need to bake the sound and get an F curve for the eyeballs for the X location values. It is very important that we go back to the first frame before we create the curve so that the audio and the animation remain in sync. This step is often missed out, so please be careful. Now select one sphere and go to the object properties. Since we want to play with its X location, please insert a key here. We have to now open the graph editor for the F curve. So, go to the key menu and select bake sound. Select the same audio file. We will go with the same settings here, the square option should be selected, with the threshold value as 0.5. Now bake sound to F curve. Similarly, for the second sphere, which is now under its parent object, select the sphere, and add a keyframe to its X location value. Then go to the key menu, and bake sound to F curve, select the sound file, and bake the sound. So we got an F curve for both the spheres. We can now go back to our 3D viewport. If we now start the animation, you will see that the eyeballs are coming out, with every jump of the box. But they are probably moving too far. If we take a look, from the side angle, the displacement is now too much, you may want the balls to move, only to a shorter distance. Let us stop the animation. You can easily control this, we can modify the F-curve, to limit the maximum displacement of the eyeballs. So go to the first frame, and select any one sphere. Let us now go back to the graph editor. We will reduce the height of this curve, to maybe 50%, but before that, we need to first convert it. So, go to the key menu, and click on, Bake Curve. You need to accept this warning. Then again go to the key menu, and select, Unbake Curve. It converts our input sound curve into a normal F curve, with specific control points that we can modify. All the control points are selected by default. If not, you can press A on your keyboard to select all the control points. In order to modify the height, press S, then Y, then type 0.5, and enter. So the curve is modified. But you can see here that the lower part of the curve is moved up from the baseline. To align it back to the baseline, press G, then Y, and then move your mouse appropriately to bring them on the baseline and click once. Similarly, select the second sphere. Then go to the key menu, select Bake Curve. Then again go to the key menu and unbake the curve. Then press S and Y and 0.5, enter. Then G and Y, and move your mouse little bit down, and click once. So we are done with the curve, let us go back to the 3D viewport. 
You can now play the animation. So we can see that the eyeballs are not moving out too far, the displacement is now just perfect. Same way, you can make further improvements to this model, you can add some noise in the Y and Z axis as well, for the eyeballs to vibrate when they pop out. You can also add lips, or maybe a tongue, and add motions to them. So we learned all important aspects of baking sound to an animation. Next, we will build a fire simulation, controlled by an input audio file, in the coming week. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.